Okay, uh, good morning ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, Professor David J. De Los Reyes. Uh, it is April 16, 2023. The time is uh, 12.05 p.m. It's uh, April 16. <coughs> My topic for this morning will be a very interesting topic because this will now be the completion of the solution of an RLAC circuit meaning the total current computation <coughs> because uh, I have solved this problem already and this is actually the third lesson before I completed the total final current for an RLAC circuit okay let's proceed our lesson for this morning will be advanced mathematics lesson number 32 uh, lesson number 32 is actually a continuation of lesson number 30 and 31. Because under uh, lesson 31, it was uh, an RLAC circuit and the problem is asking for the total current as a function of time. Since the solution is very long, okay, I proceeded to lesson 31 and, and after finishing lesson 31, we haven't reached yet the solution of the total final current. And for this morning, this will now be the completion of an RLAC circuit, total current as a function of time. Okay, uh, I will now try to give you the total current as a function of time because from the classical solution, the pressure equation, this is the equation of the current. Okay. The total current as a function of time for an RLAC circuit as a function of uh, all the parameters is actually the first one is the particular solution and the second one is the so-called complementary solution. Okay, I will read the total final current before I will give you the explanation. The total current as a function of time for an RLAC circuit will be a sub m over z sine of the quantity omega t plus angle p minus theta okay close quantity minus e sub m over z sine of the quantity angle p minus theta times the exponential thing equation e raised to minus r over l times time the solution of this was actually very long it took us three lessons because of the algebraic manipulation Okay, it was very long. For lesson 30, uh, we have we only presented the solution for the complementary current. And for uh, lesson uh, 31, okay, uh, we do not know yet the value of B and C. So we proceeded with the computation of the value of B and C. Okay, that was lesson 31. And for tonight, since we have already the value of ABC, that is ABC. The first part is actually the complementary solution. And the two partial fractions represent the total particular solution. Since we now know the value of ABC, we could now proceed with the simplification, the algebraic manipulation. Let us see if the particular solution was uh, the same as this one. Actually, it was the same. Because under the so-called classical solution, differential equation, this was a particular solution. That is E sub M over Z, sine of the quantity omega T plus MVP minus theta. So to take for the total final current, it should be the complementary plus the particular. And this is actually the total current as function of time for an RLAC circuit. Okay, let's proceed with the explanation. Initially, <coughs> for the solution, capital letter I as a function of S is actually E sub M over L times open bracket. It was a complicated uh, equation. Okay, so those who are found with the AC equations, this is not AC anymore, okay? This is not short videos. It is a long video form. E sub M over L, S sine of angle P plus omega cosine of angle P all over the quantity S plus the ratio R over L times the quantity the square of S plus the square of omega. Or this should be close quantity. Sorry for that one. This is close quantity. Uh, this is actually I capital literacy function of S. 
So by using Laplace transform, okay, we will try to bring out this equation here. That is the total current as a function of time. Okay, and to bring out the solution, we use the so-called uh, partial fractions. Okay, under lesson no 30, we assume the value of S to, S to be negative R over L. And actually, we have computed for the value of A under lesson 30. And the computed value is this one. The value is a negative L over Z, sine of the quantity, angle P minus theta. Okay? And under lesson 31, we have computed the value of B and C. I don't have to explain that one. Go back to lesson 31. For uh, coefficient B, it should be negative L, L over 2JZ times A raised to. The exponent is minus J plus quantity Angle P minus theta. This is J. Uh, it involves uh, oscillatory current, okay? And the value of C, it should be L over 2JZ times E raised to. This is negative for B, but for C, this is plus. This is plus. Okay? That is uh, plus. Uh, it's understood to be, if we remove the plus, it's understood to be plus. A raised to J, open quantity, angle P minus theta. So the difference of B and C is actually in this sign over here. This is negative, this is plus. And the sign of the exponent, this is negative, and this is plus. That's the only difference. So to compute for the total particular solution, when we apply the value A to be equal to this, under lesson 30, we have computed that the complementary current is actually negative E sub M over C sine of the quantity angle P minus theta E raised to minus R over L times time it is this. So our only problem now is the particular solution. And the particular solution is actually represented by this, by this two here. If we try to simplify this one, okay, we can compute for the particular solution. Okay, uh, let's proceed with the solution. So, IP particular equal to what it is? Okay, let's go back. Uh, let's go back to this. Capital letter I as a function of S, I will again put the subscript P here, meaning particular. Okay? I'm following this. A sub M over L. To compute for the particular, just consider B and C. Okay? Because if we try to consider A, that represented the complementary, and we are done with that, right? So for the particular, cover up A, and just execute this one here, considering A sub M over L as a continuation, as a part. Okay? So I sub S, okay? Capital letter S, as a function of S, subscript P equal to, I'm following this. A sub M over L, open bracket. B over sine, B over S plus J omega, it is this, plus C over S minus J omega. We now know the value of B and C. Right? So it's just a matter of substitution. So take it easy. Write legibly. This is B and this is C. So if we try to simplify, it should be A sub M over L. B is actually negative L over 2JZ E raised to minus. I'm following this. Over S plus J omega. Okay? Plus. The value of C is actually L over 2JZ A raised to the positive J open quantity angle P minus theta. All over S minus J omega. And if we try to simplify this one, uh, there is a common factor over here, the L over 2JZ. We bring it out. Okay? So it will be A sub M over L times L over 2JZ. Z is actually the impedance. Okay? Open bracket. For the first part, okay, it will be... I will write first this one because this is negative. I want the negative uh, part to be written next to the positive. So I will write first this one. We bring out this L over 2JZ. 
So what remains will be A raised to J angle Q minus theta all over S minus J omega. It is plus, right? And since this is minus, this will now be minus. We print out this L over 2JZ. So what remains on the numerator will be A raised to minus J open quantity angle P minus theta close quantity all over S plus J omega. Okay? And actually, this L here cancel with this. They cancel out. Right? So what remains will be E sub M over 2J times J open bracket. We rewrite this one. It will be A raised to J open quantity angle P minus theta times 1 over S minus J omega minus A raised to minus J angle P minus angle theta close quantity times I just uh, rearrange a little bit, okay? 1 over S plus J omega. I segregated this one and this one. I write first the exponential thing, right? Because if we now try to take the inverse Laplace transform of both the left and right, uh, I will concentrate on this one and I will concentrate on this one. So taking the inverse Laplace of both sides, the inverse Laplace of capital letter I as a function of S with the subscript P, will just be simply I as a function of P. The one we are looking for, the particular solution. So if we try to take the inverse Laplace of this, what remains on the left will be I with the subscript P, meaning the particular solution. Equal to, I will just rewrite this one, E sub M over 2JZ times A raised to, I will rewrite this one, it is this, but the Laplace transform of uh, 1 over S plus, what's that? Uh, is it minus? Minus. Minus A. The inverse Laplace transform of this is actually A raised to AT. That's why uh, we derive all the formulas for Laplace transformation because when we go back, we should do it. Okay? And the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus a the second one is actually a raised to negative 80 if this is minus this should be plus if this is plus this should be minus so the inverse of plus transform of this should be a raised to this negative right so a raised to j omega t the value a uh, is actually j omega. So this should be times e raised to j omega t minus, I will write this one, and the inverse Laplace transform of this should take this one, the negative thing, times e raised to negative j omega t. Okay, you see? They are now all under the so-called exponential, exponential notation. Okay, so this is now Oh, this now involves the so-called loss of exponent and how to simplify this one. Okay, I will try to check my camera. Oh, it's mine. Okay. The inverse Laplace of this is a j to omega t. And the inverse Laplace of this is a raised to negative j omega t. If this is plus, this should be minus. And if this is minus, this should be plus. Right? And again, by using the loss of exponent, that is under... Um, under uh, the honorable Mr. Red Pen, Black Pen, Red Pen, okay? <laughs> I particular now should be E sub M over 2JZ, open bracket. We multiply this two here, right? Same base. So we will rewrite the same base plus the summation of the exponent. The summation of the exponent will be J, okay? We factor out omega T plus angle P minus theta. Omega t plus angle p minus theta. We combine, right? Because if we try to take the product of two, two terms with the same base, it will be the same base plus the sum of the exponent. Mr. Redpin Blackwin, okay? 
in honor of Mr. Blackpen Ritpeda. We learned from him something from him, right? And I am now emphasizing the importance of what he is saying. And I am repeating it because I know it also. Okay, so this is A raised to J, omega T plus single T minus theta. The second one is still the same. Same base, so it should be same base E plus the sum of the exponent. Uh, we bring up the negative J because uh, negative J times omega T is actually this one. Okay, it is this. Plus uh, the second one, uh, it remains uh, P minus angle theta. Angle P minus theta. Okay, and again, if we try to simplify this one, we, we, we will use this Euler's equation here. That is, in general, A raised to J of angle P is equal to cosine of P plus J sine of angle P. And if this is negative, it will be the same, cosine of angle P. But if this is minus, this should be minus, minus J sine of angle P. This in general, you could replace this angle P here by any angle. And the expansion will still be the same. So actually, if we try to simplify this one by following Euler's equation, it will be cosine of omega t plus angle p minus theta. This is plus, right? So this is plus. J sine of omega t plus angle p minus theta minus open bracket. Uh, I put an, uh, a, what you call this, a, a closing thing because uh, this is a negative thing. And uh, the next step will be, we will try to simplify, right? Uh, just to be safe. The expansion of this, again, by using Euler's equation, it will be still cosine of omega t plus angle p minus theta. But since this is minus, okay, this should be minus. Minus j sine of the quantity omega t plus angle p minus theta, close bracket, close bracket. And if we try to simplify this one, this is i particular, right? Very interesting. A sub m over 2jz, open bracket. First one, the same. Cosine of omega t plus angle p minus theta plus j sine of omega t plus angle p minus theta. I will now try to remove this thing here. So the expansion of this will now be negative. Okay? Cosine of omega t plus angle p minus theta. This negative, negative, this will now be plus. Okay? That's very important because if we didn't place the quantity of the first one, if we try to simplify, we will be a mistake if we didn't place the quantity over there. So a minus and a minus, this will not be plus. And this is a minus and a plus is a minus. So this is minus cosine of omega t plus angle p minus theta plus j sine of omega t plus angle p minus theta. And luckily, this cosine of omega t plus angle p minus theta cancel out with this. Because this is plus and this is minus. This is plus j sine of omega t plus angle p minus theta. This is plus j sine of omega t plus angle p minus theta. Similar terms, right? So, a sub m over 2jz times open bracket. Plus 1, plus 1. So, it will be 2j sine of the quantity omega t plus angle p minus theta. And luckily, this 2j here cancel with this. Okay, so what remains for the particular solution? And we are lucky we got it. Okay, congratulations, guys. Uh, we all congratulate ourselves. The particular solution now for an RLAC circuit will be A sub M over Z sine of the quantity omega T plus angle P minus theta. Uh, the significance of this, the other component of the resistance is actually an inductor. So, for an inductor, this should be minus. If it is a capacitor, this should be plus. So, when we go to the RC easy, okay, take note of this. When we reach the particular ca current, it will be same, I think. It, it will be the same. But the sign of this should be plus for an RC easy. But for tonight, since it is R an RL easy, this is minus for an inductor. So the total current now as a function of time is actually the particular plus the complementary. The particular is this one, the one we solved. 
and the complementary is the the one that was solved under lesson number 30 that is minus e sub m over c sine of the quantity angle p minus theta times e raised to minus r over l m sine and you notice it under the classical solution this was the total particular no no total current so what we are saying is see, whether you solve it by differential equation or by using Laplace transform the total current will still be the same but as an observation by using the so-called algebraic manipulation it seems that Laplace transformation was a very long solution compared to the so-called differential equation solution I will check my camera okay that's it guys uh, this is now the completion of the solution of an RLAC circuit that is the requirement is I as a function of time okay we started with the partial fraction and then the computation of the value of ABC we it needs lots of patience to bring out this one uh, you, it will be an algebraic manipulation because if you made one mistake that's it you cannot uh, bring out the correct solution okay oh that's it so for those of you who are taking up advanced mathematics okay this is for you guys if you want to subscribe to my channel my channel is at youtube.com slash at prop dvj de los red and if you want to share it please click share this is now the completion of the solution of an RLAC circuit for total current as a function of time. Good morning from Los Angeles.